All right, it's a beautiful Saturday morning, and this is my daily cast ramble, barf everything out of my head. So uh, it's a beautiful morning. The birds are chirping. You can't really hear it here. I'm in my wife's office because uh, my daughter has hijacked my basement podcasting recording quote. I'm going to do air quotes again, studio. Um, so I'm going to try not to move around on this chair, which is a little bit on the loud side. But um, yeah, we went to Toronto yesterday. I took the kid. Oops, that's my wife's phone, which makes a sound for every single event that ha- happens. Um, went to Toronto yesterday with the kids, and uh, it's really interesting. You know, I found myself, for some reason, being in a bad mood on the way there. Like, not not like uh, angry or anything like that, but just, I don't know, I was feeling feeling like, uh, I guess, not not the happiest or whatever. And uh, I got over it. Um, and But, you know, it's funny, as I try to observe these emotions, <clears throat> I find myself going down this rabbit hole of like, I'm actually getting a lot better at observing my emotions and trying not to react to them, um, which I think is a skill that's really important for everybody to learn and practice. But <clears throat> it's really, I think sometimes I struggle with what the next step with that is, you know, so like, okay, so I'm in a bad mood, or let's say, let's say uh, Tani does something that annoys me, right? And I am extremely good actually at, at, you know, creating a space between stimulus and response for basically every other person in the world. Um, you know, including my kids, like my kids, they're, they're really great kids and they don't do, they don't do much to, you know, get a rise out of me say, and I'm pretty accepting of who they actually are as teenagers. I remember what it was like to be a teenager. Fuck. Like, so I'm pretty compassionate and empathetic with, you know, and I know it goes on in my own head sometimes. And I think, my God, I'm 45 and I've done all this work around this crap. And, you know, they're 14 and haven't. So they'll, they've only had the benefit of listening to me, which really means they're probably tuning me out because I'm their dad half the time. But um, so I'm pretty compassionate. But with, with Tanya, it I, I really can struggle sometimes with creating that space between stimulus and response. And, and I'm not talking like, you know, I don't get like mad or yell or anything like that, but I, I find myself having, not always, but frequently having uh, almost immediate reactions and feeling defensive to some of the stuff that she says. And I, I struggle with what do I, okay, so I create a space between stimulus and response. I observe my thoughts, but what she said still pissed me off, say, and again, this doesn't happen that often, so I'm, I'm, I don't want it to sound like we're living in a fucking domestic violence house or anything. We have a wonderful relationship, but it's an interesting thing, right? Because I feel like she's the person I'm closest to. She knows the most about me. Um, she's certainly more in tune with my uh, opportunities for improvement, let's say, than anybody else in the world. And I struggle with the idea of um, creating that space because I feel like, okay, I'm up. That annoyed me. I can observe that I'm annoyed. Um, But I struggle with the next step of addressing it in a way that's productive and effective, I think is, and I need to, I need to work on that. I want to work on that um, because it just will help, you know, it will, it will help. And I'm not really sure what to do about it um, other than just to keep practicing, right? Because I think part of it is if she gets annoyed about stuff with me, like there's a whole bunch of, there's a whole bunch of shit around it for me so for example like tanya's german she has likes things done a very specific way usually the way she likes things done are better like they just quantitatively turn out better than than my way of doing things which is much more let's say ad hoc and um more unplanned and you know let, let's say i've her her way produces more predictable outcomes which i get but also i'm not like that i'm not I'm not a person, I I have my own strengths and sometimes I feel like her insisting, I guess, on wanting to do things a certain way or or being rather rather adamant about it, I rebel against it in a way because I feel like I don't want my creativity to be stifled and I don't, yeah, and I I have this, I want to be my own person, right? And it's really important to me And, and so... Where the fuck am I going with this? So this is a really interesting thing. I can't believe I'm recording this on a podcast. But anyways, I thought about that a lot yesterday too. So regardless, um, you know, so I'm trying to find the balance of taking the best of both of us and and 
doing it in a way that's productive. And I think just the fact that I'm talking about it and thinking through it is really important, right? Because I I normally, a younger version of me uh, or a different version of me might have just said, you know what, this is just continue like some kind of single celled organism, like stimulus response, stimulus response. And so what I'm trying to do is realize that she's got, as a human being, oh my gosh, she's got incredible, incredible strengths. And as a human being, I have incredible strengths. In fact, as human beings, we all have incredible strengths and we all have uh, really interesting quirks, let's say, and weaknesses or areas of opportunity or whatever you want to call it. And finding the balance between how that all mixes together is fucking complicated sometimes because like you want to take the best of the both of you, um, but you also want to let each person be freely expressive of all of who they really are. And it's fluid and it changes on a day-to-day basis. It changes based on how your day was or anything. I mean, like lots of variables, right? And trying to figure that out uh, and be effective is can be a real challenge sometimes. So what I'm noticing about myself is I'm trying to, I'm, I'm really trying to make more space and and create that space again between stimulus and response. And I find myself saying like, okay, I'm genuinely curious about why she's reacting the way she is. And then I'll say, okay, I understand why she's reacting the way she is. And then I'll think to myself, but it's dumb. You know, <laughs> the way she's, or the way I understand how she's feeling. And in my head, I'll be like, but she's feeling, but that's dumb. It doesn't make sense, which is totally, I'm the one being dumb when I say that. So I, I really want to move past that. And, um, it's funny, as I say it out loud, I can already see how this this exercise of, you know, effective, James Pennebaker calls it, I think he calls it effective journaling or something like that. Anyways, effective barfing out my feelings into a microphone. I can already see how it's going to be a helpful thing um, because it is, uh, just helps me create some context. But it's funny because I, I mentioned yesterday, I'll tell you kind of how, I'll, I'm not telling I'm really not doing this for anybody else. So I, I feel like when I get in front of a microphone, I'm talking to an audience and I'm trying to keep it all legit and genuine. Um, so if I say I'm talking to you, maybe I am talking to you and maybe it doesn't even matter. This is the kind of stuff I think about. So, um, you know, as I'm laying in bed this morning, I'm like, I get up, I have to tell you, I got to, okay, this is an example of how my way of being is completely fucked up sometimes and how I'm so glad I'm married to somebody like Tanya. She locked the back door last night, the screen door. She never locks the screen door. I couldn't open the screen door. I basically felt like I was trapped in the house and I went upstairs and told her the door was broken. Like I actually did that. So when you can look at, like when you see shit like that from her point of view, I mean, I can understand how I feel. I appear less than competent at times, like absolutely without a doubt. Um, so, but as I'm laying in bed this morning, you know, as I'm, locked in the house. Um, you know, I'm thinking, okay, Mel is sleeping downstairs. I got to do, I said, I'm going to do this, um, you know, ritual of creating a, uh, daily, what I'm doing right now. I said, I'm going to do this every day. And I, and then, you know, things aren't set up right. Mel's in my space. I wanted to record it outside. I'm quote locked in the house. I can't even believe I'm saying this out loud. And, uh, but you know, then I'm putting all this pressure on myself, right? Because I'm like, I, I haven't set things up to be able to do them in the right way. This is one of the reasons I feel ineffective. And, you know, if I had my shit together before I went to bed last night, everything would be smoother and I'd be recording this thing and it would be done already and yada, 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 on and on and on and on. And so I'm glad I'm, I'm recording it, but it's that, it's finding myself in those types of situations. I mean, obviously the, you know, fake locking, being locked in the house thing is uh, an anomaly. Like, just to be clear, that does not happen all the time, but... But I, I know there's a huge opportunity for me to do things that um, structure my time in a way that makes it more effective. So I don't find myself in these situations where I'm like feeling like I can't do the thing I wanted to do and then going to let myself down and maybe let somebody else down and like running through this in my head. And the thoughts that go through my head are, you know, you know, if, if you were truly going to make an a impact on the world, uh, you know, in proportion with your capabilities and to live up to your potential... I feel like a dog is trying to, our dog is trying to come in this office. Um, if you were actually committed to living that, then fuck, fucker, you would set up your time in a way that allowed you to unleash all your capabilities, right? So 
that's the I, I think that that's a thought I think a lot. And sometimes I feel like I get paralyzed by it, right? Because I don't, maybe I don't know how to do it. Or like I said yesterday, maybe I don't know how to structure my day, but it it causes me a fair amount of stress because I know that in order to unleash or my capabilities or develop myself fully, I need to figure out a way to structure my time. So I, I don't want to harp on that too much, but I, it is, well, you know what, I'm going to just, again, this is stream of conscience. I'm already judging what I'm saying right now. So, you know, because, oh, I said this yesterday, so I can't say it today. So, uh, but it is, it is a really important thing for me and I'm realizing it more and more and more. So, um, yeah, what else, what else is there? What else is there? I really want to, I'm doing a webinar on, um, oh, you know what? Something else that's, it goes back to the time effectiveness thing. I can see this is a huge fucking theme for me, but I'm finding myself because I have a lot going on and I'm not using that as an excuse. Like, I mean, maybe I have, I have more going on than some people. Other people have more going on than me. It doesn't fucking matter. Comparing myself to other people doesn't matter, even though I just did it. Um, but I, I find myself finding emails, responding to emails overwhelming sometimes right now. Like I'll get a bunch of emails or even Facebook messages. I get a lot of Facebook messages. And this goes back to the effectiveness thing where I, where I should block off time and just do these tasks. But I find myself getting overwhelmed and I'll, I'll literally see an email from somebody that I should respond to that might literally take a minute. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't even think about that right now. And, and I'll go do something else. And then what happens is I can build up this delay uh, or lag and, you know, where I take longer to respond than I want to, which really bothers me because I I want to be a person that has a shit together enough that I can provide that level of interaction and level of customer service, say, not, not that everybody's a customer, but you know what I'm saying, like that level of, that level of responsiveness that's commensurate with the vision I have for myself and what I want to create. And so, you know, there's another example. And as I, the more I talk about this, the more I'm realizing how much that it actually bothers me. And I feel like I feel like if I was able to structure my time better, not only would it help me grow my business, but it would help me um, be even more present in my for my family, um, which would be which would be amazing. Because when you don't get things done that you want to get done, it can be very hard to stay focused. And even like because I don't want to be like see. Okay, this is another thing I do. I'm trying to be really, really conscious of the language that I use. So instead of saying what I don't want to be, I want to say what I do want to be, which is absolutely fully present with my kids. So I don't, so I want to be sitting there with them and them, even if we're watching a TV show, we watch some teenage girl TV shows together <laughs> and uh, it, uh, I want to be fully, fully present with them. And have them be the only thing on my mind. And knowing that the things that I needed to get taken care of were taken care of with diligence and precision and effectiveness and timeliness. And so I can see as I talk about this how actually really important this is to me. And I think one of the things that bugs me is I've known this for a long time, you know, and I've made half hearted efforts to do something about it, um, but I haven't done the work. And normally I'm pretty forgiving with myself about that in the sense that, you know, life's a journey and fuck, even when we do shit that it doesn't, we, th we think is not, you know, that's less than ideal. It's not always fixable right away. We've got to grow as a person. We've got to learn new skills. We've got to try new things and fail and all of those types of things. And so I'm usually fairly self-compassionate. Um, but this one is bugging me because I've known about, I've known this for a long time and I've operated under this assumption. And I think it's just a bullshit lie I've been telling myself, which is that I am like at my best when I am doing a million different things at once. Now, I don't, I don't know that that's, so I, I don't even know if that's possible. Like I know that the human brain is not a multitasking brain um, and it really just does things in parallel. So if you switch between 10 different tasks, you're not actually multitasking. You're just totally context switching all the time really, really quickly, which 
is a surefire way, I think, to make you ineffective. Now, I was listening to somebody on Joe Rogan's podcast the other day who's done all these crazy things. He's like a fucking genius and blah, blah, blah. And he's a guy that has 10 things on the go all the time. So obviously it can work for some people. I mean, I guess you could make the argument that he could have been even more effective. Um, but I mean, honestly, this guy is a, is a fucking world changer. So, you know, so I look at myself and I think, is that some bullshit lie that I've been telling myself? Or really, is it just a function of my unwillingness to take dedicate the time and energy to being more uh, organized, effective, and present in each task that I do? Because I feel like I've, I've often repeated this line that I have no attention span. Well, that's fucking bullshit. I feel like that's bullshit because I do have an attention span and I can get lost down the rabbit hole when I'm doing something that I, I'm truly into and I truly love. And so I, I, you know, I used to say, for example, that I don't have any attention to detail and I, I definitely, you know, don't have the attention to detail, like for example, that Tanya has, but you know, when it's something I care deeply about, I have attention to detail. When it's something that I'm not that interested in, I have no attention to detail, which is one of the reasons that I'm all over the place here. But going back to the thing about Tanya is that is is that I can see why she gets annoyed with me because th- with things I'm not like totally focused on, I don't have any attention to detail. And that is, I am sure that I could create something different there. You know, I really am because Uh, I think that's just a default operating system that I've gotten away with for a long time, but I don't think it's like, it's not, I want to be a different person. I want to, I want to be the same person with a a different set of skills. And I, I really, really want to be the kind of person who's fully engaged in every single thing that he's doing. And I do a lot of things on throughout the day where I'm not fully like emotionally mentally engaged and I know that's not possible for every single thing like I don't need to be fully emotionally engaged like getting mustard out of the fridge or like doing the dishes but I mean there's lots of other things where I I could deepen my level of engagement and I feel like that's probably something that is really important because I do beat myself up about it quite a bit like if I make a mis- especially if I make a mistake from sloppiness, like from doing something that's sloppy or or not being engaged. Because usually what I'll do is I'll pretend that it doesn't really bother me that much. Like, and it's really probably because I'm embarrassed or because I, like, let's say, for example, I break something in the house, you know, and if Tony gets pissed off about it, which is totally fucking normal and understandable. um, Usually I try to be all cool and calm about it, but I'm beating myself up in the inside because I'm thinking, yeah, that was sloppy. And you brought your lack of attention to this detail caused this thing to happen. But I changed all these other things. I've changed all these other things about myself, but this is an area where I really have an opportunity for improvement. And so when I look at that, I think, okay, yes, like technically that's true, but how many things can somebody change about themselves at once? Like, fuck, I've grown incredibly as a human being. And maybe a more compassionate way to look at it is just to keep not sole focus on it, but just to keep focus on it. Like I keep it in my mind, but then I think, oh my God, how many things can I keep in my mind and yada, yada, yada. Like this is the stuff where growth and development happens in a way that's not linear and it's messy and, and different things lag or, or accelerate at different times and all that kind of stuff. And it's like, Wow, where am I? Where was I going with all of that? Um, so yeah, anyways, lots of opportunities to improve, and it's amazing how jumbled the thoughts in my head can be sometimes. I mean, I'm gonna if I go back and to listen to this, which I'm not going to, to, because the whole point of the exercise is to just barf it out and get rid of it. Um, but it's amazing how how messy the thoughts in my head are, and I think the thoughts in my head are probably often even messier than what I just actually said. So. Anyways, that's taking me right up to uh, close to the uh, 20 minute mark and I'm going to sign off for the day and go buy some kimchi and then do some gardening and then have an awesome conference call with a good buddy of mine. All right. Until the next daily ritual, which hopefully I will enter into not having beat myself up about being effective, but let's see.